Friends, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. I just love putting together ideas for you guys. And this week, we're going to do a little bit of upcycling with some jars. They are great for storage. I love using them in my craft room, and I can't wait to share this idea with you. But hey, if this is your first time stopping by my channel, make sure you click on that um, subscribe button and click on the bell and select the all option and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. We try to do it every Friday. That's why we call it Inspiration Friday. So give me a second. I'm going to get my camera angle changed and we are going to get making some really cute jars. I've got three ideas for you today. Can't wait to share it with you. Okay, so we're gonna do some jar projects today and I'm gonna start with the easiest one first. So I saw this um, idea um, on Liz Fenwick's channel and I'll make sure I, I link her channel so you can see that. But I did a little di bit of a different take on it. So Dollar Tree vase, okay, and then Ikea coaster. Did you guys know that these fit absolutely perfect there? So what I decided I wanted to do is I wanted to add a little top to mine, okay? Now, I picked this up at a um, thrift store, and I don't know if you guys can see, but it says Atlanta, just ever so lightly. So before I get going on this, I'm going to take a little bit of paint, and I'm going to grab a paintbrush, and we are going to see if we can just cover up that... Atlanta and so I'm just going to give this just a little little bit of a paint on it and I'm just going to tip off those leaves and I don't need to tip them all off but I'm just going to add a little bit of extra yellow around okay that way nobody will know that this one used to be something that somebody picked up at, from Atlanta. Now it did have, I think what it used to be is a, um, oh, it was a magnet. So I removed the bag magnet from the back, just adding a little bit of paint in there. Okay, as easy as that. Okay. And so good as can be. I'll do a little bit of brown just to um, cover up a couple of those spots that I just did. Okay. Just how cute is that? Okay. Let me grab just a little bit of brown down from my stash here. And I'm actually just going to use the same paintbrush, you guys. And I'm just going to put a little bit of brown. Well... I'm actually going to use the same paintbrush, you guys, and I'm just going to tap a, a little few places here, just where I hit it with the yellow. Not normally how I take paint from a paint thing, but this is going to just, I'm just barely touching it, you guys. Okay, so now. No one needs to know that that came from Atlanta, okay? And so all I'm going to do now, you guys, is I'm going to use my glue gun, and I'm also going to grab some E6000, which I always have handy, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to... Okay, you guys, so now all we need to do is I've got um, this little bottle of E6000, um, little thing, and so I'm going to put a little bit of E6000 all the way around the edges, okay? But I'm also going to use my glue gun just to get instant adherence, okay? I'm going to center that right in the middle of my jar, okay? So I've got a cute little jar lid there. I've got some cotton balls that I always like to have handy here in my craft room. 
I'm gonna throw a lid on it, and how cute is that? I'll make sure I give you a close-up view of that one. But that is jar project number one. Okay, so jar project number two. And I have got a lid and just a jam jar, okay? Easy as can be for that, but what we're gonna do is we are going to add a little bit to this just to make it a little bit cuter. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna give a coat of paint to the jar. So I have gotten, you can see I've used it quite well. This is um, Dixie Bell cotton chalk paint, okay? And so all I'm gonna do is I am going to add a layer of chalk paint all the way around this one. I'm gonna give a pretty good layer to it. And you guys, my paintbrush has been sitting out for a while, so let me grab a fresh one. <laughs> Cause that one got really stiff. Okay, so I'm just going to add a good coat all the way around. And what I like about these jam jars is they have got the little, um, oh, kind of diamond um, grid to it. And you're gonna see, we're gonna just stress this jar a little bit after it all dries up, okay? And I'm just gonna barely go over the edge there, you guys. Really don't need to, but I am doing that just so it is all covered, okay? So we're gonna let that dry. Okay, then what we're going to do is we are also going to add this same chalk paint on the lid. Now, I learned a trick that if we give it really um, a thick coat of paint, and then if we hit it with a heat gun or a hair dryer, it will crackle. Now, a couple months ago, I shared with you guys a tutorial on using the actual crackle medium, but this is supposed to crackle all by itself. So I'm anxious to see how this one works. Okay, so I've got a really thick coat on there. As you guys can see, I've got it all over my fingers. Okay, I am going to grab my hair dryer and we're gonna see if we can get this one to crackle. Probably kinda of hard for you guys to see. Let me move it up there for you and you can just barely see a little bit of crackling going on, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to take this out to my garage and I am gonna hit the lid with a coat of um, Rust-Oleum clear gloss. And the reason why I wanna do that is we've got another really cool step we wanna to do to this and I don't wanna take the chance of any of the paint coming off. So give me a second and I'll be right okay, back. Okay guys, for some reason I missed recording this step that I went ahead and did sandpaper and distressed um, this jar. Now remember how I told you it had that diamond finish to it and so I just used a piece of sandpaper and I just lightly sanded all the way over it. So cute as can be, okay? Now we have got our lid and it's all dry. And what we're going to do is just to add a little bit to it, we're gonna add a, um, a pull drawer, I guess I would say, pull from a drawer, a door handle, okay? And what I've done is I've already double checked and I found the smallest screw I could find in all of my little tools and I've added in some washers, okay? Because we want this to fit really tight, okay? So I've got my door pull that I'm gonna do and I've got my um, lid. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my drill, okay, and I'm gonna drill a hole directly down the middle, okay? Okay, so as easy as that. I love that I have my own tools. 
My husband used to always give me a bad time when I would always want to borrow his tools. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke that screw through that hole. It's not quite wanting to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my drill and I'm just going to round it around a little bit. So then what I want to do is I'm going to line up, excuse me, I'm going to put my washers right on my screw, okay, and then I'm going to add that through that hole. I'm going to use my screwdriver because it's going to be a tight fit, okay, and see how that's coming right through, okay. Then what I'm going to be able to do is take that door handle that we've got, or that door pull, and I'm going to add that right on there. Okay, and I'm just going to tighten it. And you know what's really fun, you guys, is you can find door pulls like this all over the place. I scored a whole bunch on a garage sale. Okay, and then you can add your lid right to your jar, okay? And how cute is that, okay? So, another item I always like to have here in the craft room, you could do this for your bathroom too, is Q-tips, okay? So I'm just gonna add Q-tips to mine. So now, you guys, I have got a jar that is holding my cotton balls, and now I've just made a cute jar that's going to hold my Q-tips, okay? And this one I am going to do to be able to hold my juke. Now, you guys might think that's kind of interesting. It's like, Lisa, what do you mean to hold your juke? So, I want to show you what I've already done here is I've already made this one and look at this. If I open up my jar, there is my juke, okay? Now I've got all different um, widths of juke and so let's make a second one that I can put a different one in, okay? Now for this one, I was running low on jar lids, so I'm just gonna use your basic canning jar. No, I take that back. So for this one, I found this jar. Now one thing that's really key, you guys, is make sure your jar lid is going to fit the, the ribbon. You could do this for ribbon, you could do this for string, whatever you want, okay? So like this size is a small mouth, this is a large mouth, okay? So just make sure you grab the right jar that you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and go with um, this jar. Okay, it's all completely finished all the way around the sides, okay? So we're gonna go with a different color for this one. I just picked up this at our local store-ish downtown. It's, um, it's a Dixie Belle and it's Peacock. So I haven't even used this one yet. So let's see um, what this cute jar will look like. I mean, what a way just to decorate up your space, you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and Definitely first time I use this one, okay. So, we're just gonna give this jar a good paint. So I'm just gonna cover my jar. Now this one is a smooth jar, so there's nothing to really distress on it, okay. So I'll most likely just leave this one totally plain, okay. I may add a label to it. I definitely could do something like that, or I, um, I don't know. You can just do whatever you want with your jars. I'm just trying to give you ideas of how you can step up jars just a little bit and use them as storage. I mean, that's what I think is just great, too, is being able to use um, these for storage and add some color to them. Okay, so I've got a good coat on that one. Okay, nice, beautiful coat. 
It is really a turquoisey pe peacock, so I'm hoping that color is showing through for you guys. Now, for this one, it looks like this jar must have been used for, or this lid at least, was used for some blackberry jam, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it a coat of our same chalk paint, okay? Do the same method that we did before. Now instead of adding a, um, a, a pull on top of this one, we're just going to use our drill again and we are going to drill a hole so that when I want to use my juke, it is right there and it's easy to do. Okay, so this white lid definitely is going to need a second coat. Okay, so I'm going to hit it with my hair dryer really quick here. Let's just give it a second coat. Oh yeah, that second coat's going perfect, you guys. Oh, this one's going so pretty. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I use juke all the time in my crafts, and I can keep it up in the cupboard, you know, definitely. Um, but it's kind of fun to have some decorative jars sitting around and why not make them be multi-purpose, you know? So there, look at that. That one's all nice and covered. Couple, there we go. Got that one all set. I'm going to hit that with my hair dryer again real quick. Okay. So we got that one all set. I'm gonna get my paint brushes out of the way here, you guys. And what I wanna do again is, I'm gonna do my drill again, but you guys, I am going to put my larger drill bit in, okay? Okay, and always make sure you're drilling on a surface that you can go through if by accident you happen to go all the way through, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and go right in the middle or eyeballed as close as I can and I'm going to drill. And I'll show you why you always do it on something that you can go through, okay? So, did not want to do that on my countertop, for sure, okay? So now, I have got a lid. I can put my juke right through it. Now, those are pretty sharp um, edges that I've got there. And so I am going to use my needle nose, and I'm just going to break off those little edges right there, okay? So we've got that cute lid, okay? So... I'm going to hit this with my hair dryer. I'm going to take it and I'm going to put a clear coat on it just like we did on the other one. And then I want to show you one more step that we're going to make this one just look absolutely beautiful. Okay, so I told you I wanted to do one more step up with this beautiful jar that we just did with the peacock color. So I think I've shown you that I've used these type of transfers before and our local shop in town carries these now and I absolutely love it. So if any of you guys are from local, um, Ish carries these um, transfers. I also have a couple places on Etsy that I've picked them up before. So I visited um, Arizona a couple months ago and I have a whole new respect for cactuses or cacti and succulents so when I got back I picked up this one right away and so I thought this transfer would look really really pretty on this jar okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to peel off the back okay decide how I want to put it on here okay and I'm just gonna lay it on my jar now remember, we did do that um, clear coat finish on the jar, okay? And so then they all come with these little tools, okay? And so I'm just going to rub it on. 
and I can see that it's starting to press in. Okay. A couple of them are going to be really interesting because they're going up a little bit at an angle. Okay, but I can tell it's transferring. See how I'm just pressing that in and I can tell the design is starting to go down. Okay. And hopefully I haven't rushed this and putting it on my paint too soon, but we will find out. Okay, and so I'm just making sure I get that all on. really see that it's starting to come. I'm just taking my time getting it on. Okay, so it is not absolutely perfect, but you know what, you guys? I actually think it gives it a distressed look. So I'll give you a close-up view. That definitely was a lot more painful <laughs> doing. So because of that, I thought that I would go ahead. Let's do our cotton ball one. No pain on this one, right? We've got that cute sunflower, and I happen to have a sunflower design. So won't that look just cute? So let's try this and let me just show you how easy these guys are supposed to transfer on, okay? So I've just got a straight glass jar here, okay? And I am just going to, just use the tool and it just transfers right on, you guys. Just wanna make sure your edges are all in really well. So I guess, you guys, it's always good to show you that not everything works as perfect as Lisa would hope it would. <laughs> but you can see that sometimes even when we have a major mistake, it can still look really nice, okay? So if I start to pull this one back, now look at the difference, you guys. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Okay, so I got my cotton balls. I got my cute little lid. So I will give you a close-up of all of these and let me grab my lid for this one that we just had the little fail on. I'm gonna go ahead and put my juke right in there. I'm gonna feed it through the jar lid, okay? And so I've got that one all ready, all ready to go. And that now holds my juke, okay? And I might even add a little bit of juke right around to cover up where my paint was. So I'll do that and then I'll show you a close-up view of all of these cute little jars that we did today. And hey, will you let me know which one is your favorite? I sure would like to know. And here's a close up view of those cute jars that we just made. I can't wait to hear which jar you like the best. I love this sunflower one, and it is just perfect for my cotton balls. But this teal one, the peacock color, I just love it. And then of course, there's a cute little jar with my Q-tips. So please leave a comment down below. Let me know which jar is your favorite. And I hope you try this project and I hope you enjoyed this Inspiration Friday project. And if you're looking for other DIYs, make sure you check out my blog at funstuffcrafts.com.